Before the start of this video, I would just like to say a huge thank you to all my supporters across all platforms. Without your support, videos like the one you're about to watch would never happen. So huge thanks to each and every one of you. In this video, I'm going to give you a sneaky peek behind the scenes as I share with you my workflow related to the two podcasts that I produce. My name's Inwills and welcome to the InCrowd. Hello everyone and welcome back to what I like to call a personal video or vlog. In these videos I try and provide you with a glimpse into my personal life. I work full time as you all know so I rarely have the opportunity to do a daily blog but even if I did seriously my life is not that interesting to actually have enough content to fill a daily blog. Instead, what I thought I would do is share my routines, thoughts and workflows that I use on a day to day, week to week or month to month. Now, before we go any further, let's get over and done with the like, comment and subscribe bit. So if you enjoyed this video or any of the videos on my channel, please consider liking, commenting and subscribing. And don't forget to press that bell button so you get a notification of when one of my videos goes live. Remember all the links to ways you can support me are in the comments below. OK, then let's get talking about podcasting. First up, I have to say at this point that I am by no means an expert on podcasting. I've had no formal training and anything that I do or implement, I've just learned and developed as I went along. So please don't think I'm some sort of expert in this area. Now, I actually produce two podcasts every month. Um, the first one is Mithras Matters, and that's the one that I'm sponsored by the design mechanism to produce. Thank you to them, by the way. Um, Mithras Matters is about a role playing game, its rule set and all its supplements. And then I produce something called the Inwills Interval, and I'm not sponsored for that podcast at all but I'm always trying to meet the overheads of its production um, in order so it can become self-funded and maintained. There's links to my Ko-fi page in the comments or the show notes below that yeah if you would like to support and contribute to my monthly target then that would be fantastic. Now, although both Mithras Matters and the Inwills Interval are both podcasts, they do have a slightly different workflow to each other because of their content. So I'll try to identify these differences as we go along. I have to say at this point that I think I need some editing practice to bring in some new ways of maintaining engagement etc my editing skills are pretty dire and hence i spend a lot of my time just talking to camera anyway back to it so i use a piece of software called asana to store the tasks i need to do um, which with each monthly episode on Asana containing the following tasks or subtasks in order to keep me on track. I did actually miss a Mithras Matters episode once and had to record an apology um, podcast or video or soundtrack. And I decided at that point that I never wanted to have to do that again. So I moved to uh, a way to be better organized and hopefully to keep on track. Now, the tasks that I do have changed across many months. And what I find that I've developed is something that works for me. And if you find that this will be useful for you, then by all means, you know, nab it. You know, I'm more than happy to share and for you to benefit if it will help with your own creations. 
Okay, so the first thing I have to decide upon is content. And each episode of both podcasts need content. And this is where my workflow starts. It really starts the moment I finished or one of the the podcast episodes have gone live. I start to think about the next one. Now, on my Trello board, I have a card labelled in Will's interval and on this card or in on the cards you know when you click into it there's a checklist of all the topics that I feel would be interesting to um, talk about on the in Will's interval and what I do is that at the end of a month beginning of the next one I have a look at that list decide which one I'm going to use tick it and then create a new card with the in wills interval on and the episode number and the title of the or the topic of that podcast. At this point, I also duplicate an in wills interval template on Evernote and rename it with the title of the episode, the number and the topic. And then from there on to the actual recording of the podcast, I put links and ideas and thoughts onto that Evernote um, note. Now, with Mythwest Matters, it's slightly different. So it starts off the same in the sense that I have a, a Trello card with ideas on. These ideas have to be, uh, well, they don't have to be, but I share them with the design mechanism. So they have an idea and can say, yes, that's a good one. This person can help here and put me in touch with um, other people. The other thing that I have on the Trello board is for Mythos Matters is two topics. They're sort of like the topic for the main chat or the interview. And then there's what I call the auxiliary topic. And this is something that I'm going to be talking about before or after the chat in order to almost like consolidate and structure the podcast episode. Now, I try to keep one month ahead of myself with both podcasts, but sometimes that doesn't happen. But one thing with Mythras Matters is that I need to organise time to talk to the person that I'm interviewing or chatting with. And in order to do this, I send them an email and we arrange a date. I interview them or have a chat with them on Zoom. I also send them two Google Docs. The first one is like an overview of the procedure, what they need to do, what they will need, things that they, topics or phrases that they should avoid, like we have no swearing on the Mythos Matters. And the second document is like an overview of the questions or topics that I propose to include in the chat. The first document, with all the details that's just shared there's no editing rights over there but the second document there is and this I find really helpful because the the person who I'm going to be chat with can add their own notes they can add bullet points their own ideas their answers which I find really helpful as a uh, an interviewer because I can pick out train of thoughts and sort of like move backwards and forwards through the doc and it also allows them to add things that they would like to chat about or publications or say, please, I don't want to talk about this. And then when both scripts are and content, so when both contents are decided upon, um, then we move on to the script writing. So with both of the podcasts I produce, I write a script for. I write a script for everything. Even my videos have a script. I generally find that if I write things down for a video, then it keeps me on track. For the podcast, because there's no camera on, I can actually read the script straight into the mic. Now, these are all on, I have template files on Evernote, um, which I just then duplicate and rename for each episode title. And this is really important because it keeps all the, the structure, the formatting, the, the beginning and the ending, those things that I want to say the same every episode to promote that consistency. The script also um, forms the basis of the transcription that I provide for both podcasts. Now, obviously, 
with the interview with the Mithras Matter ones, I can't transcribe the discussion that we have, the chat that we have. But for everything else, the script is cut and pasted or changed and pasted into form a transcript. And that is especially important for the Inwills interval as well, which is all just me talking. Now, the reason I do this is that, number one, I'm really keen to promote accessibility. And number two, we do have some international listeners, especially to Mithras Matters. And they one got in touch with me and said it would be really helpful to have the written form of the English as well as the spoken so they can read it together, help their understanding and maybe even, you know, improve their knowledge of the language. So I tried to write the whole script in one set sitting. And the reason I do that is to try to maintain a, a thought train, a train of thought throughout the podcast. So again, it comes back to consistency. At this point, I set up the folders on my hard drive ready for both podcast episodes. I have a set structure for those and I duplicate the or save the template files ready for the recording. So with all the scripts prepared, I sit down to start recording and I try to do this in one sitting. The reason is, is that then I hope that the volume level is the same throughout. There's no changes in background noise, things like that. So the lighting stays the same if I'm doing videos. Yeah, so I follow a very similar um, process with my videos as well. Now, recording can take me several attempts on each part of the podcast, mainly because I might read the initial script and then decide to change words or change orders. And this is a time that I tend to reorganize the episode if needed. Of course, I make these changes back to the script because they form the basis of the transcript. Now, I have a very set way of labeling files and doing the recording. And if you're interested in this, then please make a comment in the um, sections below. And I could do another video on it to share it with you, but it would be too long to put into this video itself. At that point, again, I would say that it's not the, might not be the best way or the correct way of doing it, but it works for me and I'm sure it will change in the future. So once everything is recorded, it's in its folders on my hard drive. I then make a copy of it to an external hard drive. Yes, I have lost a complete podcast episode before. So this is a very, very important step for me now. And that's all copied across, ready and saved. And yeah, which takes on to the next part of the workflow, which is the editing. Okay, so on to the editing. Yeah, you can even, hopefully you can see how much time this actually takes me, but I do enjoy it, I really do. So just as the scripts and the file structure have a basic template, I have templates set up um, for each of the podcasts. So all I need to do is, is open that, save it at, as the podcast um, episode number and the title of it and then it's ready to go and I put this into the relevant folder that I created in the last stage. Now I actually use Adobe Edition for editing and I've actually learned how to use Edition as I went along. I've watched Skillshare videos and I've also um, watch YouTube videos and Adobe's own tutorials. And I've learned so much just from doing and listening back to some of my earlier episodes, especially Mithras Matters, I realized that hopefully I've learned a lot since starting out. Yeah, so I'm not saying again, I can do an episode. There is actually a YouTube video and um, speeded up of me um, editing the podcast. So do have a look for that. But I can even use, and I often think this is the height of knowing how to use a program. I can e even use keyboard shortcuts now uh, when I'm editing, which is uh, does save a lot of time and the movement of the mouse. Now, I have to say that the editing is, is not a case of just 
putting all the recorded bits together. Um, there's so much to think about that I've developed the more and more podcasting that I've done from sound levels for both the dialogue and the music. I eliminate background noise. I apply filters like hard limiters. I add some standard compression. And I have to change the volume so that the intro music fades out for my intro, et cetera, et cetera. So it takes quite a while and you're always going back and re-listening to bits, making sure that the gaps are quite natural and that at this point, if there's anything that I've made a note of in the interview phase that I have to remove, it's now that I cut that out, et cetera. Okay, so when everything is edited together and I'm happy with it and the file is then saved and exported as a WAV file, um, ready to be uploaded to where I host both the podcasts, which is a brilliant hosting service called Buzzsprout. So once I've uploaded the podcast to Buzzsprout, who I must say have been absolutely fantastic, at this point in my head, the podcast is ready to go. And so these final things that I have to do are, I find really hard to focus on, um, to actually complete. I actually want to move on to the next thing on my job list. And I've actually on Asana put these down as um, subtasks to remind me to actually do it because otherwise I'll, I'll just forget. So for each of the recordings, I add the transcript, which is, comes from my script. And with the Mithras Matters podcast, which is quite a long podcast, I add chapter headings as well. Um, now, the Inwills Interval doesn't have chapter headings because it's a lot shorter. But the Mithras Matters podcast has the same artwork for each episode. OK, so I don't need to create separate um artwork however the in wills interval um, podcast does have separate artwork and so i do this by using adobe spark and then i upload that to buzzsprout as well both podcasts if i'm doing them on time are scheduled to be released so mithras matters gets released on the first of every month and the in wills interval is on the 10th of every month and then I use the built-in feature for Buzzsprout to create a tempting soundbite that I can share on social media, um, either before the episode or during the month to redirect people back. And I have to say that I have had no training on social market media marketing or anything like that. Once I get to this point, jobs are not complete yet. So I go back to my Trello card and I fill in all the details ready for to cut and paste into social media posts. I upload the artwork to that. I add links to the episode. I add hashtags and I even on Trello um, schedule when it's going to be published um, because then I upload everything on a monthly basis across my social media and at that point once that card is finished and done I can tick off that to-do list and say that that podcast is done and ready to be shared. So just to some final thoughts on that workflow I really do enjoy producing both the podcasts and mainly because if I didn't enjoy it I, I wouldn't do it but there are moments when things are difficult when ideas won't come to you when there's technical issues when you're working to very tight deadlines or full-time work is preventing you giving enough time and things become rushed but generally you know those times are few and far between I really do hope this is giving you a bit of an insight to the workflow behind the episode and also how much work goes into them it's not something that I just sit down on an afternoon and record and then that's it and if you would like to support the In Wills Interval, and then please do consider donating to my monthly target that I'm always trying to achieve on Ko-fi. Your support really would be appreciated because if I can make this 
more self-funded, then I know when I eventually retire or leave full-time work, it can continue you know, by itself. So thank you for listening. I hope that's really giving you an insight. And if you listen to either of the two podcasts, then thank you so much. I really do appreciate your support. More workflows, organizations, productivity and personal videos on its way. So please do stay tuned to the channel. Until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, but most importantly, stay positive. Thanks for watching. See ya. Bye.